Whenever someone asks me who the perfect commander is in Rise of Kingdoms, literally the perfect best commander in the game, I've pretty much recently been saying Lao Che is that commander for many, many reasons. He is a really, really good commander, both literally on the open field and also just for the health of the game for many reasons. So today I'm going to tell you why Lao Che is such a good commander and what other perfect commanders could come to the game in the future. So if you're interested in why Lao Che is so good, what makes him such a basically popular commander, then you do really want to stick around till the end of the video. Now let's just start off today's video by diving into why Lao Che is literally the perfect commander. What makes him such a good commander in my opinion, especially for the health of the game. And the first thing, and this is probably one of the most important things, is he revived infantry units. Him basically by himself, Lao Che, made infantry probably one of the strongest commanders or one of the strongest troop types in the game, maybe even arguably the strongest again. Pretty much it made the best free-to-play march of a Lao Che with a CPO and because many people owned CPO and Guan at the time, it really wasn't as good as some of the other marches, but Lao Che really took infantry up to the level it needed to be. He was just a very powerful commander and there are a few other reasons I'll talk about later which really contributed to reviving infantry, but it seems like Lilith is going to continue with the trend that Lao Che brought in of having smite damage, which means we can probably expect infantry to be one of the better troop types and have some of the better commanders or at least have on par commanders for a pretty good time. It also did help balance out the meta of just complete messes of cavalry. I mean, when Lao Che was released, I think most people were running two to three cav marches. Most whales would have like four cav marches. It was ridiculous how dominant cavalry units were pretty much just overran the whole entire game. So I think Lao Che has at least added a reason to not always invest in cavs and has kind of given a counter towards some of the cav units because Lao Che can beat Nevskis and Jones, he can beat some Hao Che Bings. So Lao Che kind of really in general just balanced out the troop meta. He still loses to most archer commanders, at least that's what I've noticed. He can beat most cavalry commanders and he's just a solid infantry commander. So Lao Che definitely did a good job at balancing out that meta and it really came from the new mechanics that he added. Lao Che alone added two new mechanics into the game, smite damage and an extra normal attack. And I know when Lao Che was first announced, I was a little bit reserved about the whole smite damage. I was actually pretty against it. But as it's developed throughout the game meta so far, I actually don't think it's the worst change. And it was definitely a good use to help infantry become better again. I mean, infantry didn't really have any unique factor because they used to be the troop type that was tanky and would just take hits, like Richard, for example. But they realized over time that doesn't work. So they just tried to add skill damage commanders, but archers were just better at that and cavalry were probably even still better at that. And so infantry pretty much just became slow commanders with a single good commander being CPO Africanus. But Lao Che changed that by adding something unique, and that was the smite damage. Smite damage is completely different from normal direct damage factor. It is boosted by normal damage instead of skill damage bonuses. And this means we can expect future infantry commanders to hold this unique thing, holding smite damage as a very key part of their kit. Not to mention, he also brought with him another new mechanic, which is dealing extra basic attacks which we had only really seen in, I think it was Golden Kingdom at that point. So it's definitely really interesting how he brought in these new mechanics into the game. And even though I said they were bad initially, I think they have actually helped the game develop more, have helped the meta kind of change a little bit. And especially because Lilith has kind of slowed down with commander releases, yet it has allowed the smite damage to kind of settle in more. And it wasn't as harsh of a change as I thought it would be. So I think smite damage was definitely a good change to the game and actually would be one of the reasons he is a perfect commander. He added this new thing to the game that yes ranged commanders have also copied but I think hopefully saying it will still stay with only infantry and maybe ranged commanders at the most. So Lao Che definitely did bring a lot of new mechanics into the game that we've seen help revive infantry, balance out the game meta and also make him pretty fun to use and just hopefully add more depth to the game and the commanders that you fight against. The next thing that really made Lao Che such a good commander was the fact that he was actually free to unlock. If you were there when he first basically was released, Lao Che was actually acquirable through an event which gave you his gold heads pretty much for free, like by logging in I think it was or doing some really really easy missions and that is definitely 
a very good thing because it gave a lot of players a reason to invest in him. Even though, obviously, when you look at it, it's only 10 gold heads, it's a free unlock. It literally saves you thousands of gems, and it would make a lot more players very happy to get Lao Che a little bit early and for free as well. So I think this was definitely a unique thing to do, and it was probably a smart move on behalf of Lilith, giving people access to the commander. So it's like, oh, he's got a very powerful kit, I have him unlocked, I may as well level him up, and it kind of helped with reviving infantry once again, because you got him for free, a lot of people were like, I can level him up and use him on the open field, so why not do it? So Lao Che being a free commander, I think that was definitely a good change, and we'll know that Lilith does this as well with ranged commanders, they give all the ranged commanders one of them for free, and I think last time they gave, I think it might have been Gajamata or Gonzalo, I don't remember, I didn't finish the event, but they do give them for free, which is definitely a nice thing, and so that definitely does allow players to have more of a reason to invest in the commander, even though it's a small reason, it's definitely something that's very nice, and it is another reason why Lao Che is perfect, because it just gives him another advantage over other commanders like Zulang, Boudicca, Herman, even Nevsky, Lao Che Bing, they're not free, but Lao Che, I mean, he's a free unlock, and you can't really be upset about that, so definitely that's a nice thing to have, and it means all those newer Season of Conquest players, or people who had just hit Season 3 at the time, did get access to Lao Che without having to wait till the end of Season of Conquest, or having to wait till the Wheel of Fortune. So that pretty much meant infantry were instantly bumped up in Season 3, and were able to compete with some of the other commander pairings, like Cavalry at the time, because Season 3, the way it works, it's Wheel of Fortune, and it's commander-based, and it's in a weird cycle, and the new commanders don't normally show up, but adding Lao Che for free, I'm pretty sure at the time, every single player in Season 3 did get Lao Che by doing the event that came around. So that was definitely a nice thing to have on his release, Obviously, that's no longer the case. I don't think you can get him for free anymore, but that was still very, very good, and it made him quite an easy commander to access and gave you more of a reason to at least try and go for his expertise or level up some of his skills for the open field. The next thing that makes Lao Che such a good commander, and I think this is probably the most pressing thing, this is probably the biggest thing that made him a perfect commander, is the fact that he revived an old and very common commander. Alexander the Great is owned by probably at least half of the big accounts in the game. Most players have access to him, and he had fallen off the meta quite a while ago. I'd say after Boudicca Prime released, Alexander the Great wasn't seen on the open field very much, and he was a much rarer occurrence. Just because Boudicca had crazy damage, and she was shredding through pretty much any Alex, so a lot less people started to run him. He was still used with Scipio Africanus at the time, but after we saw more, basically, people using Guan Yu and other infantry commanders released, over the years, Alexander the Great kind of drowned out of the meta a little bit. But with the release of Lao Che, it has probably become one of the stronger, if not one of the best, infantry marches that a player can run, but you still have the option to use Lao Che with other commanders. So that means, really, Lao Che is able to be used with a commander a lot of people already own. It's another reason why people would have invested in him. It's like, well, I have a Guan Sepia right now. It's a pretty decent march. I've got a Lao Che and I've got an Alexander the Great expertise. I could go and invest in Lao Che and then run Alex with him. And it really did bring a lot of value to an older commander who most people had pretty much benched at that point. And the reason this was the case was because of Lao Che's new mechanic of dealing extra normal attacks. And that means Alexander the Great's second skill here has a much higher chance of triggering, and the reason this matters a lot is because the cooldown is only 3 seconds, where it's a 10% chance to deal extra damage. If this cooldown was 10 seconds, then Alexander the Great with Lache wouldn't really make a difference, because in the long run, you're going to get the same trades. But because of this shorter cooldown here, basically Lache is able to increase the chance of Alexander the Great triggering his second skill and dealing a thousand instant damage to the opponent, which definitely made Alex much more meta again. We've seen it basically today. Even now, a lot of people run Alex Lao Che, and I said in my video the other day that it's the best city popping march in the game just because of how strong the pairing is. So that's definitely a really good thing about Lao Che and something that makes him a really good commander just for free to plays and low spenders is he allows you to bring in an old commander and get a lot of value out of him. It's not like Alexander the Great is just a good pairing. He is probably one of the top pairings for Lao Che. I'd say arguably the order is like Gorgo, Scipio, and then Alexander the Great coming in at third. So that's a really, really good thing to have 
with an older commander that you also can get access to in Season 2. So he's a very, very old commander that works extremely well with a much newer commander too. So that's definitely a nice thing to see with Lao Che. And I'd say, once again, another reason that he is a perfect commander. Now, the final thing I'd say that really makes Lao Che perfect is the fact that he's got everything you need for an open field commander. His whole entire kit is pretty much built around being an amazing open field commander. Everything in there is very strong. Obviously, a lot of commanders have this, but I think it just adds again to him being a strong commander. First of all, he has the strongest AoE in the game, dealing damage to five enemy troops in a fan-shaped area, with the highest damage factor in the game of 2,250. This is a little bit more than La uh, Zhu Lang, sorry. Obviously, it's harder to boost the damage because a commander like Zhu Lang can get skill damage boosts on his active skill, and a lot more commanders have skill damage boosts like Herman Prime or YSG. But when you look at Lao Che's kit, it is also quite easy to get normal damage bonuses, especially from infantry who tend to have a lot of them. So I think that giving Lao Che this highest damage factor in the game definitely added to people wanting to invest in him, which once again is another reason that infantry got revived. Lao Che's stats, I mean, they are pretty good as well. He's got a skill damage reduction, which is really, really nice. And he's also got stuff like March Speed bonuses and a Defense bonus. The March Speed here, definitely another really good thing. You'll notice that Alexander the Great with Lao Che is just stupidly quick. It's another reason why the Commander pairing is so good, is because often infantry are slow, but Alexander the Great having one of the highest infantry March Speed bonuses in the game, put it with Lao Che and you've pretty much just got a gun of a March. It's got 50% March Speed and it's going to run around the map like it's nobody's business. So that's definitely a nice thing to have inside of his kit. His second skill really is not need. Sorry, his third skill, it's really not needed. You don't even have to invest in it. And then you max his fourth skill, and you've got a really good position there where you're basically able to deal extra normal damage. And whenever you deal smite damage, the target can deal a whole total of 10% less damage for three seconds. And this skill right here, the third skill, allows you to trigger the fourth skill, which gives you a nice passive skill debuff. So when we go over Lao Chase kit, he's got an active skill AoE, five targets strongest in the game with a debuff on it. He's also got very good stats with the March speed and the skill damage reduction there. And he's got a third skill which doesn't need to be invested into that synergizes with the fourth skill and allows you to reduce the target's all damage in a passive skill slot, which means it will stack with something like Azul Lang or any other future all damage debuffs, including Alexander the Great, who I'm pretty sure has an all damage debuff he gives to his opponents. So definitely very, very nice thing to have on a commander like Lao Che allowing him to have longer future investment and just make him good on the open field. And on top of that, if you choose to go for his expertise, you have a very, very unique thing here that works extremely well with a lot of commanders like Alexander the Great, even Sibio Africanus on his third skill, and also things such as future commanders who probably have forms of, let's say, triggering skills. For example, Herman Prime was a triggering skill. Obviously, he's not infantry, but a lot of commanders have something that's like, you have a percent chance to deal this type of attack, and Lao Che really is able to increase those percent chances and make them A, more common, and B, more reliable, which just makes any commander much, much stronger. So now that we've gone over why Lao Che is a perfect commander, in my opinion, do I really think he's going to stay perfect forever? And I mean, I think the obvious answer is no, he's never ever going to be meta forever. But for now, he's definitely a very strong meta commander because he's able to revive a lot of older commanders due to his pure strength with them and very good synergy. He is going to be a very used commander for quite a while. I'd say he'd be up there with the lifespan of Guan, who lasted almost three years. So I would expect Lao Che to last a very long time in the infantry meta unless they release some crazy OP commanders over the next three cycles, which then again is almost two and a half years before that even happens. So Lao Che, he's definitely got quite a while to go. He's got a lot more synergy to bring with Alexander the Great, which I would say will be a very good pairing for at least two and a half to maybe even three years as we even see more commanders come into the game. So I would be surprised if Lao Che fell out of the meta anytime soon. And I think he's always going to be known as the commander that pretty much revived infantry because I made a video saying infantry were the worst troops in the game and they needed help. And it was very true. And Lao Che was pretty much their savior. So I will say that Lao Che is probably one of, if not the best commanders in the game, just for how well he fixed the in-game meta, and at least allowed some resistance to the absolute dominance of cavalry, without having to do something like a crazy nerf on a commander, which has never really happened besides Attila Takeda. So I think Lao Che was a very smart play and did work out quite well for them. Now, the final thing I would like to talk about is what would another perfect commander be like? Another commander that is literally perfect. And there's a reason I've clicked on Herman Prime here, because Herman Prime does a lot of the things Lao Che does, 
but a little bit worse. I mean, Amon Prime isn't as strong as Lauche in terms of open field, pure raw strength, and he's a little bit more niche in terms of his fourth skill and his expertise. They're really the only reasons that he's not as good as some of the other commanders. That being said, he also doesn't have the craziest synergy with some old commanders, but Hammond Prime does do what Lauche does pretty well. I mean, he does work very well with YSG, which is a nice thing, and he brings in some new unique mechanics, like an AoE poison effect, which is pretty much taking Tamiris' old debuff and then a adding an AoE to it and allowing you to hit multiple targets with a fairly decent AoE damage. He also has some crazy of his own debuffs that are on a passive skill slot, and he's just got pretty good stats all around. So I think Emin Prime is probably the closest example to a current commander that's almost perfect, but he's not really at that level. I think he's not really as meta changing as meta saving, because, I mean, archers were in an okay position when he first released. I mean, obviously, they weren't in the best position. They were probably the weakest troop at that point. But I'd say at this point, they're probably equal to infantry, just because they have a few better commanders than some of the infantry ones. For example, Zulang, Henry, Boudicca. And these commanders are probably better than commanders like Sargon and Tarek, who are, yes, pretty good commanders, but not at the level of these other meta commanders. So I would say... Yeah, Hermann Prime is probably the closest to a perfect commander. Obviously, Zhu Lang also is a really good commander, but he's more of just a very strong open field commander. He's not game breaking in terms of meta changing, and he definitely didn't bring in any real new mechanics. He just had pretty much the same things as other commanders with bigger stats. So Zhu Lang, very strong commander, but not perfect. I'd say Hermann Prime is closer to that perfect commander, which boosts an old commander like YSG and has a lot of future potential through his debuffs and unique forms of debuffs that he has added into the game. As for a future perfect commander, I mean, it would have to go in the cavalry units because they are expected to see a commander next. And I don't really know what would make cavalry perfect. I think it would be something that goes with Saladin. I mean, Saladin is like the Alexander the Great of cavalry because a lot of people did get him. But the thing is, Cavalry don't have that much of an Alexander the Great in their kit, because Saladin was a Mightiest Governor Commander. I don't think he is anymore, but because he used to be, it pretty much means that Saladin is a little bit more niche and not as many people have access to him or chose to expertise him. So I think, yes, adding a commander that boosts Saladin would be good and a lot of people would like it, but it won't be as impactful as reviving Alexander the Great or reviving a YSG. But that being said, if we see a Cavalry Commander that somehow manages to synergize really well with Saladin, I think that could be very interesting. Maybe a commander which is able to boost the secondary commander's skill damage, or a commander which like literally the damage factor number, or a commander which benefits from having healing reductions or march speed reductions on the opponent would be interesting. I think moreover, healing reductions would be more unique there, because a lot of commanders have march speed reductions nowadays. I mean, Boudicca, Lao Che has one. I'm pretty sure Hao Che Bing might have a march speed reduction as well. So you'll notice that really it's not the most important thing. More, we would probably more expect a commander that benefits from the opponent being reduced in healing because not a lot of opponents heal. So if you're able to make that part of Saladin's kit strong again, I think it would make him a little bit more meta because he's got some fairly strong things in here like a skill damage reduction and counterattack damage reductions. But overall, he's a little bit outdated. So I'd be curious to see what Lilith could do to make a good commander that works well with Saladin, which I would say would be somewhere in the realm of a perfect Cav commander. That being said, I don't think Cavs need that much of a boost because they're kind of overpowered right now. Even with Nevsky not being the most meta investment, he's still a really, really strong commander on the open field. So overall, I would say Lao Che is probably the strongest commander in the game, as in how good he helped the game out, especially the infantry meta. But I want to know, what do you guys think about Lao Che? And I don't want to know about it in the comments. I mean, I will read the comments, of course, and I do like all the comments. But I do want to know in the Discord server, what do you think? Do you have some crazy reports with Lao Che you want to share? Do you have a story you want to share? Do you have a small clip you want to share? Join my Discord and you can send it in there. I have a whole chat dedicated to your best open field reports and your worst if you want to show those. And also a space where you can send any clips of your field reports as well. Along with this, I read every single ping and message that really gets sent in that server. So if you want to message me, if you want to chat with people who play Rise of Kingdoms, or you just want a really good place to get some advice, pretty much all around the clock, I definitely recommend joining my server. Link will be in the pinned comment and also in the description. And if you don't like it, you can always leave. So you might as well try it out. Now, I just want to say thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.